say maybe 19 years ago, when I was doing my PhD in the UK, I lived six years in the UK. I was studying a PhD in comparative religions in Birmingham, Birmingham, UK. So during the six years, I lived in an area where the majority around me, they were from Pakistan, especially from Kashmir. So the masjid was full of Kashmiri brothers. All of them, they used to wear the, you know, the Kashmiri or Pakistani or Afghani, something similar to Afghani. I was maybe the only one exactly like, like this. So they knew me that I'm from Jordan. The people of the masjid, they realized that I'm from Jordan and I became a friend of them because they were next to my house, exactly. So once it seems another Pakistani or Indian brother who's a British citizen came to this masjid and he was not aware about my reality. So maybe he thought that I'm a Muslim convert, okay? So it seems he asked about, okay, who's this guy? <laughs> So when I finished the prayer, he came behind me and he asked me the following question. I want you just to imagine what happened between me and him in the street. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Brother, what do you do? I told him, I finished my master's degree in tafsir and blah, 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 etc. Then he said, brother, with a you know, cheerful face, with a happy attitude, he said, brother, can you read the book of Imam Azam? Imam Azam? in their accent and Imam Al-A'lam, Abu Hanifa, which means he's asking me, can you read the book of Fiqh Hanafi? This is his question. But in his way, he said that, can you read the book of Imam Al-A'lam, Al Imam Al-A'lam? I said, yes, brother. Look now. I thought he wanted just to make sure that I am, quote unquote, expert in this, or I have access, and he wanted to ask me about something inside the Hanafi method. So I'm waiting for, the question. I said, yes, brother. I said, brother, can you read the book of Imam Shafi'i? I said, yes, brother. Which means, can, can you read the Fiqh Shafi'i? Yes. Brother, can you read the Tafsir of Imam Tabari? Yes, brother. I'm waiting for the question. <laughs> is it Fiqh? Is it Tafsir? I don't know yet still. So I'm waiting. He needs something. Would I ask you, this is, excuse me, are you an expert in computer? You say, yes, this is not the question. Okay, the question. What can I do if I have a problem with the antivirus, for example? So I'm still waiting for the question. Brother, can you read the, the tafsir? Can you read? Can you read? So he asked me about seven, eight, ten books. Maybe the, the nearest of them to me at hundred years. Most of them 1,000, 1,000, you know, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, Tabari. Yani most of them in the first stages. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. In my mind, I say, subhanAllah, but what is the question? <laughs> Yeah, why are you asking me? When I finished saying yes, 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 he just looks at me in a way, there was an attitude in his face, then he left me. Just the discussion is finished by him. Khalas, khalas, khalas. Wallahi, do you believe? Wallahi, this is the end of the story. Let's talk about the wisdom behind the story. You know what happened between me and him? He was looking at me in a way in our Arabic language, sorry. <laughs> in Arabic language we say, Amutu akul makanak. I'm ready to die, but to be in your place. You have Arabic language. You can open any book about Islam. You read, you have full access to read these treasures. Wow, Yarak. How lucky you are. This is the attitude. Which means, brother, can you read? Yes, I mean, you know, normally I'm, ask, I'm answering because it's very simple for me. <laughs> I was born in Jordan, I'm an Arab, this is my language, and I'm an expert in this, so I'm, a, I'm not feeling about anything exceptional. For him, you know, especially, you know, Pakistani brothers, you know, they are ready to pay everything in their lives for, for the Quran, for Arabic language, and mashallah, Allah get, bless them with this. And by the way, I traveled 200, 280 cities on 26 countries and five continents. The first nation on earth in, in building mosques and masajid on earth are the Pakistani people. Number one on earth. I witnessed this by my eyes. So subhanAllah, they are highly interested in this. Arabic language, Quran, Tafir, something. It's very important for them. So he was looking at me in a way, wow! You just open and read and that's it? You understand? Which includes by default as well. You read the Quran, you understand what Allah says. He says, wow, I wish I were you. I wish. What is the message? The message, first of all, for the Arabs now. Now, Arabs, you have a, a message. 
Do you know what is the jewel and the treasure that Allah has given you without paying anything and the accountability in the day of judgment for the fact that you just open and read and you understand? While others of millions, perhaps they are minority now, but 300 millions out and half of them they don't speak Arabic and the other half they don't understand Arabic. <laughs> so basically, but, but still Allah has given us the Arabic language, which means if you want just to read, you have no problem of accessibility just to go and understand. Others, they pay, wallahi, I saw some Indian and Pakistan brothers in the UK, sometimes they spend five years of their life, they pay money, keep studying just after five years to say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, just to read the fact, or Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, he can't. You are by birth, you've given this bless. So there's accountability for this. In what you are wasting your time with regard to the knowledge of Allah. This is message for Arabs. Let's come to the non-Arabs now. In, with the Arabs now. Let's make analogy, yes now. This feeling of this Pakistani brother towards me because I have Arabic language, full access to the will of Allah, I just go and read, I understand. This is the same should be applicable on you Muslims with regard non-Muslims in terms of you have the full access to the will of Allah as the only nation on earth. Others, they don't know Allah. Others, they have no idea about the will of Allah. You have. Others have no idea about what Allah loves, what Allah hates, what Allah wants and why, when, how. You, me, we have. True or false? So, but they don't realize, maybe they have no idea, but you and me realize we have a, we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this has consequence, I mean accountability. It's not just as we say in Arabic language, it's not because of the beauty of your black eyes or blue eyes. No, 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 no. It, 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 it's Allah has favored us, which means it's had what? There is a duty. There is responsibility. So let's let's feel the bounty of Allah upon us. Because if you do not appreciate the fact that you will know and you have and you are gifted, you will not have the motivation to do something as being thankful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you focus on this, you will feel shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I am chosen, yes, by the way, we are the chosen people. Truly, I'm not joking. We are the chosen people. Allah has chosen us by His final message. Old Testament, the New Testament, last Testament. <laughs> so we've been chosen to have the last Testament to be spread to every single person on earth. So please rethink about this again and let this be a reason to give energy for all of us, inshallah, how to look again to the knowledge of Allah, to the knowledge of the Quran, to the knowledge of Islam, to the attitude from spreading Islam, inshallah. Zakum Allah khair. We see you, inshallah, after half an hour.